The ultimate discussion of the bill on foreign agents was highly emotional. In the Georgian parliament, deputies were fighting, bottles were flying across the hall, and insults were heard. Outside, the building was engulfed by a crowd, breaking barriers, painting walls, and clashing with the police. Passions over the document, which have been ongoing for almost a month now, seem to be approaching their climax. The law was adopted in the final third reading. Example Kabakidze stated that the document has a single goal, to disclose the financial statements of non-governmental organizations receiving millions of dollars from abroad and spending funds on subversive political activities. The adoption of the law on transparency of foreign influence creates strong guarantees for long-term peace and tranquility in Georgia and overcoming the so-called polarization. But this is not the end yet. President Zora Beshvili promised to veto the bill, while the ruling party aims to override this veto. Protesters announce new actions, threaten indefinite protests. There are many young people in the crowd who keep saying that they aspire to the EU, and this law will hinder that. Can't one not see the parallels? It seems like the Kremlin's hand is everywhere per the playbook. However, this document has no ties to Russian law. But it has a lot in common with the American one. In fact, it is a calque, just a light version. But it is the Georgian document that the West calls a violation of human rights. All these things are not only incompatible with American values, but also with the aspirations of the Georgian people. The aspirations of ordinary Georgians in the state debt hardly concern anyone. In Georgia, there are around 25K NGOs and NPOs. It turns out, for example, one for every 150 citizens. 90% is funded by Western structures. Among them are dozens of big, active, aggressive ones. Given this foreign bread has been eaten in the country for years, the protest scale is understandable as well as why people are taken out to the streets. Foreign operatives. In return, they were offered authority. And at present, they have been awarded a substantial funding to execute the purported revolution of foreign agents. External pressure is clear. The EU has stated that the law on foreign agents hinders the country's progress towards Euro integration. Shostko judged this document in Washington. They threatened to reconsider relations with Tbilisi. Even the term sanctions seems like a response to the stubbornness exhibited by Georgia. If the law progresses without coordination with European Union standards, limitations will ensue from the United States. James O'Brien led the Western Landing Party that arrived in Tbilisi yesterday. Several European politicians openly against diplomatic status joined the protesters, urging them to continue acts of disobedience. If not interference in others' affairs, then what is it? Regrettably, we witnessed precisely the identical symptoms that we witnessed in Serbia, that we witnessed in Armenia, which overflowed onto the streets of Belarusian cities at a certain point in time. We see that these people are essentially working according to the same manual. Unfortunately, supporters of the protests stubbornly fail to notice Ukraine's experience, which clearly demonstrates the true purpose of Western grants. And the law on foreign agents is just an excuse. Georgia is not allowed to strengthen its independent foreign policy. The potential for a Maidan, a viable option for the West, is undoubtedly present. Olga Davidovich, Karina Ishku, Dmitry Astarta, TV News Agency.